President Obama has selected his nominee for the Supreme Court to replace the deceased uh, Antonin Scalia. Now, if the Senate approves Obama's choice, Chief Justice of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit, Merrick Garland, will be the new Supreme Court nominee. Now, the question is, who the hell is Merrick Garland? Well, I've got some information about his past, and I'm going to talk about him and why I think he, uh, or what I think about this possible nomination. Now, uh, Garland is apparently a 19-year veteran of the D.C. Circuit. Now, a court that is widely viewed as the second most powerful in the nation. Now, Garland uh, graduated with high honors from Harvard Law, clerk for Justice uh, William Brennan, and spent some years as a partner in the multinational law firm Arnold & Porter. Now, he also held senior positions in the Justice Department, including a leadership role in the department's criminal division and a stint as a principal associate's deputy attorney general. Now, this was during the George H.W. Bush administration while he was in the Justice Department. So, now, he is uh, currently 63 years old, and he would be actually the oldest person nominated to the Supreme Court. Well, that means that his tenure would certainly not be as long as Antonin Scalia. Remember, Scalia was on the court for over 30 years. This guy would not have that long of a, of a stay on the court. Now, where does he stand? Is he, is he a liberal-leaning judge, uh, judge? Is he a conservative judge? Well, I got news for you. He is a conservative. What, you think Obama would nominate a progressive? No, no, no. He's actually widely viewed, and from a lot of articles I get, he's either viewed as a moderate or a center-right or a conservative justice. I guess it matters on your point of view of the political spectrum. Now, why do I say that, or why do they say that? Say that? Well, he has some very conservative opinions. Now, uh, this is one of his decisions in 2003. Now, in 2003, Garland joined an opinion holding that the federal judiciary lacks the authority to assert habeas corpus jurisdiction at the behest of an alien held at a military base leased from another nation. Now, that means essentially Guantanamo. And this opinion prohibited Gu Guantanamo Bay detainees from seeking relief in civilian courts. Now, that's uh, kind of a disaster if you're somebody that ended up at Guantanamo and you weren't a terrorist. And there's plenty of cases of that. So, indefinite detention. Now, a little over a year later, the Supreme Court reversed that decision, Russell versus Bush, although, in fairness, as they say, this is from the New York Times, it should be noted that legal experts disagree about whether the decision Garland joined was mandated by existing precedents. So, now, he ruled in favor of indefinite detention. Now, I want to point out why that's important because many of the Gitmo detainees were not actually terrorists and were actually cleared to go back to their home countries, but we wouldn't let them go, so we held them indefinitely. Oh, yeah, you can go home. You're supposed to go home, but you can't. We're not going to let you. Hmm, great. And he was part of that decision to want to keep them. Now, Judge Garland also has a conservative record on criminal justice. A 2010 examination of his decisions by SCOTUS blog's Tom Goldstein determined that Judge Garland rarely votes in favor of criminal defendants' appeals of their conviction. So, if you're looking for someone who would be in favor of any sort of criminal justice reform, you will not get it with Merrick Garland. What you will get is someone who's actually been praised by Republicans. Now, uh, this goes back to 1995. Now, in 1995, Bill Clinton had nominated Garland for a seat on the U.S. Supreme Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia. Now, the Republican Senate obviously obstructed them uh, because, guess what? <laughs> They're Republicans. They refused to give him an up, and, up or down vote, and Clinton resubmitted the nomination after his re-election. Garland was confirmed with bipartisan support, 76 to 23 in 2007. Now, once again, why would they block him? Because they're Republicans and they like to block everyone, which is what's happening this time. However, Republicans that blocked him found no actual reason to block him. It's not as if he was some sort of liberal. 
It's not as if uh, we disagree with him on the merits. We don't think he can do this job. No, no. They say, and I've got plenty of quotes here, that he was suited for the job or he could do the job, but we think he could do a better job on a different court. Now, uh, this comes from Senator Chuck, uh, Chuck Grassley. Now, he blocked Garland's nomination, arguing that while he was, quote, well qualified, no one needed to be confirmed to the vacancy as the court's caseload did not require a full complement of judges. Yeah, you know, he's qualified. He could fit in the court. I mean, he'd do a great job, but we don't want people doing that job. We, we got enough justices. There are too many cooks in the kitchen. <laughs> so we're not going to confirm him. What a ridiculous reason. But nonetheless, here are some uh, quotes from Grassley and other Senate Republicans at the time, what they said about Judge Garland. This is uh, Senator Orrin Hatch from Utah. Quote, Merritt B. Garland is highly qualified to sit on the D.C. Circuit. His intelligence and his scholarship cannot be questioned. His legal experience is equally impressive. Accordingly, I believe Mr. Garland is a fine nominee. I know him personally. I know of his integrity. I know of his legal ability. I know of his honesty. I know of his acumen, and he belongs in the court. I believe that he is not only a fine nominee, but is as good as Republicans can expect from this administration. In fact, I would place him at the top of the list. We go to Chuck Grassley. I have nothing against the nominee. Mr. Garland seems to be well qualified and would probably make a good judge in some other court. Well, to be fair, the Supreme Court is another court. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, Senator Jeff Sessions. Quote, he has a high position with the Department of Justice, and by all accounts, he does a good job there. There will be a number of judgeship vacancies by, in the D.C. trial judges. He has been a trial lawyer. He would be a good person to fill one of those. I would feel comfortable supporting him for another judgeship. When a Republican feels comfortable in not nominating somebody, watch out. That's a red flag. Then you also had uh, then-Senator John Kyle from Arizona. Quote, I believe Mr. Garland is well qualified for the Court of Appeals. He earned degrees from Harvard College and Harvard Law School and clerked for Judge Friendly on the U.S. Court of Appeals. Uh, let me just stop there. Judge Friendly? Really? <laughs> it's almost like Officer Friendly. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. He has uh, clerked for Judge Friendly uh, and for, the just, or for Justice Brennan on the Supreme Court. And since 1993, he has worked for the Department of Justice. So there is no question he is qualified to serve on the court. And this is also from Senator, then Senator Strom Thurmond. I have no reservations about Mr. Garland's qualifications or character to serve in this capacity. He had an excellent academic record both at Harvard and Harvard Law School, Harvard College and Harvard Law School, before serving as a law clerk on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit and the U.S. Supreme Court. Also, he has served in distinguished positions in private law practice and with the Department of Justice. Moreover, I have no doubt that Mr. Garland is a man of character and integrity. Strom Thurmond, if Strom Thurmond thinks that you have character and integrity, that might not be a good thing. Finally, uh, we have Senator, uh, then Senator Conrad Burns. Uh, the nominee has a character and, high, and is highly qualified for the position. Now, <laughs> though several of those senators opposed confirming anyone to fill that seat, 32 Republicans backed Garland's nomination. Now, uh, Orrin Hatch, along with the current senators Thad Cochran, Dan Coates, Susan Collins, Jim Inhofe, John McCain, and Pat Roberts all voted to confirm him. So, there you are. You have a so-called moderate that is praised by Republicans who is against criminal justice reform, and he also happens to be pro-corporate. Why do I say that? Because he's actually worked on behalf of the tobacco industry. So that is your President Obama's pick. Now the irony of this is that even with his conservative record and high praise from Republicans, they're still going to block him. They still are blocking him. Now I'm sure some people will praise this nomination as Obama playing three-dimensional chess, right? Oh, he's, doing, he's playing three-dimensional chess. He's actually nominating a Republican that the Republicans will love, so he'll get what he wants. Wait, wait, he gets what he wants, 
What do we get? We get a conservative? That That's crazy. He's not playing three-dimensional chess, guys. He's not nominating Merrick to compromise, to get the Republicans on board. He's actually nominating Merrick because he likes his positions. See, President Obama is not a progressive. He is center-right. He's not even attempting to nominate a liberal. Already he's trying to give Republicans a, quote, palatable choice. You think the Republicans would do the same if they were in this position? Hell no. You know that they'd try to get the most conservative right-wing justice nominated in order to fill Scalia's seat, in order to keep this a very conservative, pro-corporate majority. That's what they want. That's what they're going to do. Now, it's obvious that I'm not pleased with this pick. But I guess the good news is that even the Republicans seem to like him, and he'd serve the corporate interests very well. They've already promised that they're going to block him. And anyone else, of course, Obama puts up for the nomination. That is unless somehow Obama successfully grows a clone of Antonin Scalia and presents him to the court. And even then, maybe they won't. Maybe that won't be even good enough for the Republicans. So who knows? My point is, you might as well go, if you know you're not going to win, if you know you're not going to get uh, anyone nominated, then you might as well put up the most liberal justice that you can find. Here you go. Take this lib. Take this huge progressive. What are you going to do now? Are you going to block him? Well, you block everybody anyway. So you know what? I'm going to spit in your eye. You might as well. Because they certainly have no problems with spitting in yours.